Okay, we're going to start the portion of Korach. We just finished with the Meraglim, the spies. And Korach immediately, at this moment, he launches and creates, he wants to create a fifth column to undermine Moshe's credibility. And literally, he wants to topple him. And the attack is so serious. It's mo the most severe attack in the history of Klal Yisrael. Ramir Simcha of Dvinsk, in the portion of Shmos, asks a question. Each one of us have Bechira. We have free choice. Even the Ovis HaKadoshim, the Holy Patriarchs, as it says in Chazal, that Hashem would not associate his name Elokei with the person until they passed away. Why? Because a person cannot be trusted till the last moment of his life, because every moment till the last moment we have choice to go in either direction. Even someone as great as Avramovinu, Chas Sholem, he can become a heretic. The man who introduces God to existence, the first human being who ever to acknowledge Hashem as master, Hashem will not associate his name with him, that he should refer to as El Kei Avram until he passes away. Because that last moment before he passes away, he could actually deny his existence. So God will not associate his name with a person as long as he's alive. So Rameer Sim has a question, what about Moshe Rabbeinu? Moshe Rabbeinu, we say Moshe Kibbal, Torah Tziv Lodom Moshe, Moshe Kilas Yaakov. What is the source and the credibility of Torah? It's Moshe himself. Is it possible at any level that Moshe could have, at any time in his life, as long as he was alive, deny the authenticity of the divinity of Torah? That's the, that's the question he poses. Rameir Simcha of Dvinsk. So he says, impossible. That in that area, Moshe Rabbeinu had no choice. Why? Because since the basis for the credibility of Torah is Moshe, and if Moshe would ever, chas v'sholem, choose to take up a position and say it's not credible, there is no Torah. The world immediately has no value any longer, and therefore God will not allow that to happen. So Moshe, I mean, once he reached that level and he was qualified to be the conduit to bring Torah to Klal Yisrael, he no longer had choice. So the question is, and we know we all have choice, and we all have choice to give our actions and our perspectives value. But if you have no choice, what is the value of his greatness at once he achieves that special level? That's my question. But the fact is, Moshe, Moshe had no choice. That's Ramir Simcha. So I asked the question. So if that's the case, if he had no choice, so being that devout person at a level that's unfathomable, what's its value? The actions no longer attributed to him. So the way I explained it was, like the Rabbim explains in Hilchus Shuvah, Paro no longer had choice. But the Torah tells us, Vayezik Hashem is late Paro. God hardened the heart of Paro. So Rama masks. So therefore from the sixth plague on with, onward, Mo Paro had no choice. But yet he was held accountable for not allowing the Jews to leave Egypt. And the plagues intensified. But the man is helpless. He has no choice. So the Rambam says that choice is a privilege. If you abuse a privilege, God withdraws the privilege. The first five plagues, Paro could have seen it clearly, and he did see it clearly, but he chose to turn his back on God. After you fail five times, God says, I'm withdrawing that privilege. As a result of this, why does Paro no longer have choice after the sixth, after the fifth plague? Because he chose to forfeit his choice. So now that he's in the state of no choice, it's due to him choosing that abusing a privilege, it was your choice to forfeit the choice. I was given the example. A person has a certain right, and he abuses that right. And the one who gave him the right says, you know, you cross that line one more time, you no longer have that right. You no longer have that privilege. So the person says, 
Why don't you have privilege? He says, well, he took it away from me. No, he didn't take it away from me. You took it away from yourself. Knowing that when you cross that line, you're going to forfeit your, that privilege, it was your choice to forfeit the privilege. Moshe Rabbe, so that, therefore, Paro, the Rambam writes, is held accountable even at the time when he no longer had choice because it was his choice to forfeit the choice. That's Rambam Hilchas Tshuva. So I'm saying, why did Moshe Rabbeinu, what qualified him to be the conduit to want to represent Klal Yisrael to receive the Torah on their behalf? Because Moshe was Moshe. And why was Moshe Moshe? Because he made many special choices to be qualified to be the conduit to receive the Torah on behalf of Klal Yisrael, of the Jewish people. As a result of that, why was he at a point of no longer having choice? Because he chose to be at that special level. Because if you're at that special level, you forfeit your choice. But he chose to arrive there to be qualified. But once you're qualified at the level, you, you have, you're in a position that you can't change that position. And therefore God withdraws your choice. So he only cho arrived and achieved that special level of no choice. To be attached to God at that level was only because he chose all the previous choices to be Moshe Rabbeinu. The exact same rationale as the Rambam explains on the negative side. This is on the positive side. But Rabbi. One second. So I just want to bring out the point in terms of bringing out the seriousness of the moment of Korach. Korach questioning the veracity and the authenticity of Moshe Rabbeinu being the source for the divinity of Torah and the truth of Torah. What's he doing? God took away Moshe's choice, with Jewish choice, that he cannot be in a position ever to deny its veracity. And here Korach is attacking and questioning that point. He says, Moshe Rabbeinu created this whole narrative. It's not God's narrative or God's dictate, it's Moshe's dictate. And it's all nepotism. So how serious is Korach's attack on Moshe? It's much more serious than the Chet Egil. Chet Egel, the Jews failed. There's God and the Jews failed. Here, the basis for our understanding of God and our purpose in existence, in all existence, that text, those dictates are being questions. Are they God dictates or are they Moshe's dictates? And that was the question which Korach tried to convince people that it's Moshe and it's not God himself. That is the seriousness of this attack. So he's usurping, by usurping Moshe's authority, he's actually usurping God. That God is out of, out of the equation. Jay, you, 